Hi guys, welcome back. It's a lovely day out there. We've got very little wind and it's just brightening up a bit now. So what we're going to do today, we're going to take the exact shorts. I've got the Air Arms S200 CZ barrel fitted in the 9015. Now I've been shooting that with a bare barrel, nothing on there, no shroud, nothing. I've got a few bits left over from previous S200 projects and of course they will fit that barrel. So I've got here a custom built silencer that I had made a good 10 years ago. I've also got here a very fancy looking air stripper. Now this has got an adjustable cone inside of it, which you can adjust the distance between the tip of the cone and the actual end of the barrel itself. So plan is we're gonna go straight out to 45 yards, use the bare barrel, then we'll shoot with the silencer and we'll shoot with the air stripper. Hopefully we can find one or the other will be more accurate. And if the air stripper is more accurate, can we adjust it to fine tune the performance even further? So are they just a bit of bling or can you actually successfully use these to improve the accuracy of your air rifle? We'll find out shortly. I'm going to use the exact shorts that I've been using in the last few videos. These wouldn't actually be a pellet that I would choose to run through any of my CZ barrels. Generally, the CZ barrels prefer some of the harder pellets, so sort of H&Ns and some of the Crossmans and things like that would be my sort of first choice, if you like. But these have been fairly accurate through most of the other barrels and stuff that we've been using so far. So we're going to use those. We're going to go straight out to 45 yards and we'll get some carbs drawn up and I'll see you at the farm. Okay, we're here. So I've already set the rifle up. I've just been doing it now. The sun's out, it's beautiful. Little bit of a breeze running straight towards us at the moment, maybe four mile an hour when it's gusting, but we're relatively sheltered alongside the boarding here. It's the first time I've shot it with the new scope on at the moment. So just getting familiarized with that on the 9015. Just started shooting a few groups. The first of them little JSB shorts that have run through it are absolutely terrible. It always takes a little while to lead in these CZ barrels, especially when you're using JSBs. So I've got sort of 20 odd through it at the moment and the groups have got tightened up and we've got a couple in these here. So starting to group really tightly, started a little bit of a wandering around as it started leading into the barrel. So perfectly normal there. But what I want to do now is go straight out to 45 yards with the bare barrel. We'll shoot some groups at 45 and then we'll put the air stripper on. I think last we'll do the silencer second and then we'll go to the air stripper and we'll see if there's any marked differences between them. I'm expecting that the point of impact will change a fair bit going certainly from the airstripper to the silencer mainly because of the additional weight on the end of the barrel itself now it may well mean that the barrel vibrates somewhat differently as it would do when it's a bare barrel but we'll get them shot and we'll find out Right, so that's our firing point. I've just got to move myself around a little bit. We're going across the yard. That's 45 yards. The target's in portrait this time. Let's come back again. Right, so the bare CZ barrel, the JSB shorts. We're going to run a group out there. We'll get 10 shots through it. Then we'll swap over to the silencer and then the air stripper after that. Right, I've just adjusted the focus. I'm still shooting on 25 mag. We're out of 45 yards now. And as you can see, we've got the bare barrel on here. I've got 10 of the JSB shorts. We'll run a nice group out there, hopefully. The wind's coming across almost at 45 degrees to the way I'm shooting now, so from right to left. Not a lot of wind, maybe four mile an hour at the moment, so hopefully won't affect the results too much. We should have fairly consistent conditions through the test, so I'm hoping, well that sun's right in my eyes at the moment, that we can get some decent groups shot. I'm just using the 25 yard aim point at the top of the card basically on the centre line we've got essentially a mil dot of drop from 25 to 45 yards that seems pretty good right them second and third ones have literally gone through the same hole that's pretty good wow yeah that's really tight hopefully we can keep on like that oh that one drifted a little bit more to the left that's annoying Remember, I'm not making any allowances for the wind. We're just letting the wind do its own thing. I'm essentially just offering up the crosshairs on the scope to the crosshair on the target, and then we can monitor the drop and what the wind's doing. So that's a bit annoying, but they're perfectly on the same elevation line, which is always a good sign. Ooh, that one dropped a little bit more. I was a bit worried when I started setting the rifle up. The first 10 shots or so were absolutely atrocious. I ended up actually shooting the target box down really low. So got a few repairs to make to the target box itself, but they have started to lead in and the groups, as you'll see in a minute, are tightening up pretty good. So, but I was a little bit concerned, to be honest, at the beginning, I thought, no, the test's over before we've even started. 
I feel that the Antrix barrel would have grouped slightly better with these at this range in these conditions today. They're pretty good, I can feel the breeze just on my cheek slightly, I can sort of get a good judge of these. They're certainly quite consistent and they'd be very easy to get to grips with and become familiar with. There's very few of these pellets that skew off a bit randomly, flyers or anything like that, they've been very consistent so far. Okay, well them groups aren't too bad, I'll run you down there quickly. Okay, that's not too bad. What we got there? Just over an inch. This one was a bit of an odd one. That was the last one. The wind sort of was doing something a bit strange there, but you can see most of these are on the same elevation line. The wind's currently blowing from right to left. So pretty good, not too bad at all. I think we'll put the silencer on now. I'm hoping that the groups tighten up a little bit with the silencer on there. So I'll get it fitted and we'll come back out to 45. Right, as you can see, all I've done here is literally popped on the silencer. Two little grub screws just nips it up holds it in position on this one it's a slide on one the barrel's not threaded or anything like that now this silencer was built for me for the s200s years ago i've used it a lot on the s200s and obviously now now i've got the s200 barrel in this we can interchange all the parts so we're out of 45 yards let's see how it goes i'm expecting the point of impact will drop slightly because of the additional weight on the end of the barrel as you'd imagine quite a lot quieter from back here, I can hear that pellet in flight all the way through. Strangely, I can feel a little bit of resonance on firing. It must well be that additional weight on the end of the barrel. I can certainly feel something. Of course, the action itself is stabilized, so it's pretty dead on firing, and I can definitely feel something going on with the little silencer on the end there. The point of impact has definitely dropped as well, marginally, relative to the bare barrel. Yeah, that one dropped a little bit more. That wind is sort of moving around slightly, but not a huge amount. So far the groups don't look quite as tight, but it's quite hard. I'm still getting used to this first focal plane set up on here and the higher magnification than I'd usually be using. So everything's looking a bit worse until I get down there and I go, oh, it don't look too bad. When that wind dies off, it's still grouping pretty tight. Well, that one went over to the right a little bit. That was unusual. That's interesting. Last two of those, so the second to last one went off to the right a little bit. And then that last one dropped a little bit low and a bit further left than the rest of them. So probably a bit of wind in play. Let's go and have a little look. Right, so we're down at 45. Not sure what happened, that was the second to last and that was the last one, but the rest of those, that's under an inch group, so that may be, the bulk of those may be tighter than the actual bare barrel itself, but not quite sure what happened to those, but it'd be interesting to have a look at them when we get home. Right, I'm gonna go and set it up now, we'll get the air stripper on. It's got an adjustable cone in the air stripper. What we'll do, we'll set it up, I'll set that cone initially at four and a half mil from the end, and we'll see how it goes. Right, I've moved you again. The sun's playing havoc. It's right low now. Air stripper's on. So I've set the cone four and a half millimeters from the end of the barrel. Conventional wisdom would suggest that you end up setting it. So your caliber, if you're 177, it's four and a half mil. That'd be a good starting point to set the actual cone itself from the end of the barrel. So that's what I've done. From shooting it with a bare barrel to the silencer, we had more drop with the silencer now. That's mostly just down to the extra weight on the end of the barrel. Of course, we have got a little bit of extra weight with the air stripper, but not as much as the silencer. So I'm expecting that the actual point of impact will be slightly above that of the silencer. So we'll get a few shots off and we'll find out. There's definitely a different sound on firing. You can hear it sort of diverting that air sort of up and away. It's got a very different muzzle report to what it would do even with the bare barrel and with the silencer. The point of impact looks to be fairly similar to the silencer with the first shot. 
Now over the years I've used air strippers like this to actually successfully cure sort of muzzle flip problems and especially on a lot of the carbine rifles that I've shot over the years you can really use them to good effect just to sort of keep that muzzle a bit stiller on firing. Of course you've got the blast of air on firing it sort of jets and moves the rifle backwards now depending on how an air stripper is shaped you can actually use that to control and keep the sight picture that little bit more sort of under control so in some cases they will make a rifle more accurate whether or not they will with this one we'll find out shortly but certainly over the years my experience has been pretty positive of air strippers on particular rifles some guns they've made no difference whatsoever but certainly some of the carbine stuff i've had over the years they have made quite a noticeable improvement to the sight picture which although it won't make you hit any more targets that info of seeing what's going on down range is fairly well invaluable so we'll see oh okay the two of those are basically touching that's a good start wouldn't that be good if it didn't move through that same hole oh okay <laughs> So strange you've still got one of them that's a little bit to the right of the bulk of that group but the three of those are probably through a oh, hard to say at the moment but a very small hole remember i'm not aiming off i'm just letting the wind do its thing it's noticeable although the action itself has already got a stabilizing system on it it's got a little counterweight in here that's pinged back towards me on firing so it keeps it very very still i've got sort of even marginally more still sight picture than i would do normally which is quite surprising so far that group's looking pretty good so it may well be that we end up keeping this stripper on here it certainly looks cool that group's looking pretty good actually I wasn't anticipating there to be a big difference between them, but certainly from this end at the moment, it looks like the stripper has tightened that group up a bit. And if anything, the wind's actually a little bit more swirly now than it was. I've got a fairly large hole now in the card itself, and they're just going straight through that hole, as you'd expect. Right, last one. Nice. That looks pretty good. Right, let's go straight down there and have a look. Well, that's a surprise. So have these couple here, like all the other groups have a little bit of spread on, but the majority of them have gone through there. So that's little finger. That's probably, I don't know, 30 mil. Right, I've just readjusted the stripper cone now. The cone itself is two and a quarter mil. So half a pellet width from the end of the barrel. I wonder if that'll make a difference. I don't know. Normally we'd run them further away than that, but it'd be interesting to see. GoPro's run out, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do is just bring my aim point down on the card slightly. So we'll get a second little group just below that on the card that's already out there. Just run a few through and we'll see how it goes. But so far I am quite surprised that group that we've got is quite a bit nicer than the other two. So I definitely think this is gonna stay on here going forward. Whoa, I wish the goey was on at the moment. The two of those are through the same flipping hole. Right, we'll do one more. That group looks... Uh, actually, it doesn't look quite as tight as the one where the cone was set a little bit further away. So it does certainly show that we've got some sort of margin for error. And of course, different rifles, different sort of firing valve configurations. You would probably find that just by adjusting that cone to suit, there will be a sort of a sweet spot for it. And I don't think two and a half or two and a quarter mil is it, but still pretty acceptable group, to be honest. I think definitely this airstrip is going to be staying on this barrel going forward on the channel here while we're using the CZ one. The firing cycle feels a little bit nicer. I mean, it's certainly not abrupt on this at all, but it feels pretty good. It certainly looks a bit meaner as well. So, right, I'll see you back at home. 
Right, we're back. Well, all of them results were a little bit disappointing, to be honest. I thought that the test was over before it started. Just getting this onto a card to start with, even at 25 yards, was a bit of a challenge. The first shots were absolutely all over the place. I was aiming up here to start, and we was down here, shot the target holder and all sorts to start with. But after about 30 pellets, it was in the end, it started to come good. We started to get some reasonable groups, but... I did say at the beginning I wasn't entirely sort of confident in running the short exacts through it. I would have much preferred to have been running something a bit harder through it, sort of some H&Ns or some QISs, something like that. I think definitely on the day I would have shot better. I felt pretty confident in my shooting on the day. I felt pretty consistent, felt fairly good shooting. I mean, the sun was in my eyes a little bit, but I'm pretty confident that I was shooting fairly well. It happens. I mean, none of them results were particularly good. We First off, when we've got... So here's the barrel then. This is the bare barrel out of 45 yards. So we've got 40 millimetres of drop, which is quite normal when you've got a bare barrel. The group overall, 25 mil, and it's a fairly scattered group. You've got one at the top here and down the bottom here. Can't really account for those, why they weren't on the same rough elevation line. So overall, not too great, really. I'm not that impressed. I would have liked to have done sort of sub three quarters of an inch group, so sort of 19 mil or less. The silencer, all well, that felt pretty good to shoot. Actually, that was pretty poor. Having a little look in it, it looks as if there's some clipping going on. Now, the bulk of that group was much tighter than all of the other options. However, we've got these ones around the outside that opened that group up to 35 mil, which really, that's no good, not even for sort of pest control duties. A bit more drop as I anticipated. We've got an additional 15 mil of drop over the bare barrel. Of course, we've got the additional weight of the silencer droop in the barrel. Now, the reason that's clipping, when you look at the end of the barrel, if you imagine this is your barrel here, this is the bore, this is the outer diameter. Now, on a lot of these hammer-forged barrels, the bore itself isn't concentric with the outer diameter of the barrel itself. This really needs some work. I've got to get it in the lathe, clock it off of the bore itself, and then true up the outer diameter, and then maybe make up a new silencer adapter. So going forward, I'm going to do that, but that was terrible, really. 35 mil. it felt pretty nice to shoot from behind the rifle, but cards don't lie that's not great so did the airstripper though actually work well yeah actually the group's tightened up a fair bit with the cone set at four and a half mil from the end of the barrel the first group that we shot was 23 mil outside edge to outside edge got a little bit less drop at 50 mil than we had with the silencer on there of course we've still got the additional weight of the airstripper itself but not quite as much as the silencer so two inches of drop 23 mil group now what was really interesting Normally, I would have these set between sort of four and six millimetres away, but I went the other way and put it two and a quarter mil away from the end of the barrel, and that group tightened up to 21 mil with a bit less drop as well. So quite interesting there. It shows that it's definitely got some potential to be tweaked. Maybe if I adjust the speed that the pellets are running at and then the cone position relative to the end of the barrel itself, I think we can probably do all right with this. So... The bore in this is a little bit larger than the inner diameter of the bore of the silencer, so there's less chance of this clipping than the silencer. Although going forward, if I redo the end of the barrel, then I'll probably look at maybe shimming this out or something like that. So yes, the airstripper has improved the groups marginally. I think with a bit more time and a bit more trial and error, if I can get these down to sort of sub three quarter inch groups, I'll be quite happy with that, especially with them exact through it. I would have liked these groups to have been as I say, below three quarters of an inch. The wind was a little bit swirly, but still quite low. We're only talking sort of all day. It was sub five mile an hour. So yeah, a little bit annoying. It does happen. I'm definitely going to come back to this, redo it once I've sort of done some bits to the barrel itself and try it with, potentially I might get some H&Ns to run through it. I've always done quite well with the H&Ns. They're a slightly harder makeup of pellet and they seem to suit some of these um, CZ barrels pretty well. So Overall, yes, the airstripper has, apart from just looking cool, it has tightened them groups up. And of course, we've got some adjustability in here. So maybe a bit more fine tuning, we can make them groups better still. So overall, a little bit disappointing. But as you can see, apart from just looking cool, the airstripper actually does work at tightening them groups up. So I think that'll do it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.